hot diggity dog. This place is magnificent. Today, we'll be covering the latest Step Diary for Stellaris First Contact, specifically the new cloaking technology, but also some of the new specifics that will allow you to play as primitives, one of which will give you access to a completely new type of FTL. Now, if you're interested in either of these topics, feel free to use the chapters in the video below to navigate to them. But anyway, a new type of FTL is coming to Stellaris, which is weird considering the game originally launched with three of them, uh, which then get consolidated into the hyperlane technology that we have these days. However, the new Eager Explorer Civics will change this completely. You will start off as a primitive society, which means that you will start with both a massive tech and population deficit, which is going to take some time to overcome. However, instead of standard ships, you will spawn with three special primitive craft, two exploration vessels, and one engineering one. Now, these are some of the ships that we've been alluding to in the last few weeks and are some of the things that I've been really focusing on because they look rather incredible. Now, these ships themselves are very special because they do have the standard sublight drive, like, you know, your standard reactive engines, etc. They've replaced our hyperdrive with a type of primitive jump drive. I kind of think like Battlestar Galactica. You can jump from one place to another. Or, if you're so inclined, it basically is very similar to the old wormhole drive that we had available all the way up to 2.0. Now, the range of this FTL drive is incredibly limited. If you decide, however, not to research the hyperlane technology and colonize 10 worlds while using this new tech, you will get the road not taken achievement because you're doing something completely different and using a different type of technology than everybody else. Now, words cannot describe how hyped I am for this. This is such a departure from regular gameplay as well as the way civics are handled, and it's a real step forward to make empires truly unique. Plus, it's nice to see that the older styles of FTL, specifically Wormhole Drive, are kind of, sort of, making their return. Sure, they are still a type of jump drive, but you get the general idea. Having only one type of technology that's completely different from everybody else's, is really, really cool. Also, there's four variants of this civics, one for uh, regular empires, one for megacorps, one for hives, and one for synths, and each one of them has a different bowman. Now, for uh, privatized exploration, the megacorp variant, which gives you star hole technology at the start of the game, as well as the ability to build star bases a lot earlier, at least a lot faster. Stargazers, which is a hive mind version, uh, basically it gets a special trait focused on resettlement and growth, as well as a bunch of intelligence bonuses. Exploration Protocols, which is the machine civic, which is basically focused on making first contact with others and investigating primitives, and they get a lot of unity bonuses for doing so. Uh, it very much feels like this is something that... Um, uh, you would get if there's only ice cream. Yes, rogue servitors will probably like this a lot. Now, finally, the regular early uh, eager explorers will get bonuses to exploration, surveying, as well as discovering anomalies. And I just have to say this once again. I cannot stress this enough. I absolutely adore this. And if you think so too, then make sure that you like the video down below. Anyway... Leaving the hype that is eager explorers behind us, let's talk cloaking. Now, cloaking has been a topic on many people's minds and has been discussed for a very long time. However, it, it was never really properly defined. Like, do you let people shoot when cloaked? Do the ships have shields? How strong is a cloak? How can we detect it? Etc. Etc. So the goals of the systems were the following. Now, science ships should be able to cloak and explore uh, even closed border areas. It makes perfect sense because a lot of the time um, objectives for science ships are locked behind borders and you're just not able to do anything with them. Plus, you know, intel ships, right? They just sneak in behind the borders. Who goes across that Romulan neutral zone to check out what's going on on those Federation world worlds? Yeah, notice how I set that from the Romulan side. But yeah, uh, having the ability to crossing borders is really important in this particular case. Observation posts being hidden from pre-FTL societies makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily want the primitives that, to know 
know that you are there. And finally, military ships should be able to uh, cloak within reason. Smaller ships should be having an easier time to cloak than larger ones. And also it should fit within the uh, Intel system, but we already talked a little bit about that when it came to the science ships. Now with all of these things in mind, the developers came to the following solution. Now cloaking device, are a ship component that will fit in the auxiliary shot slot, which means that you won't be able to get any shield boosters, hardeners, or anything along those lines, unless, of course, you've got a larger hull, you will have to use that for the aux slot. And basically, the very first type will be available to corvettes and frigates only. Yes, the basic cloaking device will only be available to them. Now, every subsequent version of the cloak can be attached to a higher tier ship, going all the way up to Titans. Now, we have a very handy dandy little diagram here that shows off the types of cloaks that we have in front of us from the basic cloak to uh, all the way to the side phase cloak, which is apparently only available to those who go down into the shroud, uh, which obviously means that uh, this could also be considered to be a soft boost to uh, spiritualists versus materialists in that sense. Also, dark matter, you will need to uh, take on the fallen empires before you can get dark matter tech. Now, also notice that the juggernaut is not on this list. No, you will not be able to cloak a juggernaut. And also, uh, in order to cloak a, a battleship and a titan yes as i mentioned before you will probably need to take on those fallen empires so get ready to find out about all the exploits that involve taking on fallen empires early to steal their tech but yeah elite goes all the way up to cruiser and i really wonder how this is going to pan out in general like how is this going to work within the grand scheme of things are you going to have small fleets popping up all over the place how is everything going to uh, go from there on like this is all very very interesting and then of course there is strength cloaking fields are have a strength and basically they go from zero where they are non-existent all the way up to 10 yes they have a, a big bonus that get attached to these sort of things so basically, um, the cloaking strength has to do with, of course, the type of cloak you have on your ship, plus additional things like ascension perks or abilities on your leaders, as well as whether or not you are in a nebula or something along those lines. And of course, you will need to have certain buildings in stations to have detection on them as well. Yes, cloaking detection arrays are now a thing and they will probably be uh, popping up on the borders. And I also really wonder whether or not there's going to be a pop-up in game where it basically says, hey, a uh, cloaked ship has been discovered in this in this area. So this is something that I find really, really curious and I find really, really interesting to see uh, coming up in the future. Now, uh, when a fleet is detected by said starbase, uh, it's either detected or forced to decloak, depending on the following condition. Uh, if the cloak fleet is outside of your borders, you'll be able to see it. Um, if you uh, with the cloaking visuals, but you won't, uh, it won't be decloaked. If a cloak fleet is inside your borders, it will be forced to decloak. If a cloak fleet is inside an enemy empire's border and thus uh, is not detected, when you declare war, they will not go MIA. So let's put this into perspective. Uh, let's say you have a small fleet of cruisers sitting inside of enemy territory, or let's make it frigates actually. And those frigates are sitting right on top of the enemy battle fleet. They are cloaked inside of a nebula right next door to them because that player has not been paying attention to the galactic geography and this is becoming a problem. All of a sudden, you move forward. War is started. And all of a sudden, all those battleships are annihilated because of the frigates that were right there shooting missiles up their collective asses cloaking is one of those things where i think by myself this could be extremely interesting but on the other hand it could be really annoying so these are the sort of things that i'm wondering about and whether or not uh, it are actually going to be feasible uh within the game itself and whether or not this is going to be even a fun component or even something that you find all the time so yeah uh, also, uh, in terms of like Intel, apparently you can send sign ships over to enemy ships uh, areas and basically um, yeah, gain, gain Intel from scanning worlds and that sort of thing. So these are all sort of things that are, are going on. But what do you think? Cloaking, is this something for you? Do you think that this is something that uh, would be cool for your games or are you thinking by yourself, 
eh, this is it's all right. Like it's not really the 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 end and all. I, I I'd rather have all these primitives hyperdrives uh, where I can zoom around the galaxy and uh, have tiny areas under my control without ever getting hyperdrives. Oh, that would be so cool indeed. Anyway, let me know down in the comments below. I'm looking forward to see what you are thinking. In the meantime, though, we're gonna go and uh, basically sign off here. Uh, I'm on, in the middle of moving house, so do be aware of that. But don't worry, I'll be back online before you know it. In the meantime, though, thank you so much for watching and thank you to my patrons for making today's video possible. And until next time, take care of yourselves and as always, each other.